The future is not just happening. The future is built by us, by a powerful community as you here in this room. We have the means to improve the states of the world. And the way they start is by tracking you. If you go deep in the weeds and what these people are saying at this place, they're openly scheming up some of the craziest plans you'll ever hear of, like tracking your carbon footprint. We're developing through technology an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm. Stay tuned. You heard it. The one world government wants to keep tabs on what you eat and where you go. All because John Kerry's a little mad that your cheeseburger is wiping out part of the population. People forget greenhouse gases are pollution. And 15 million people a year because of the quality of the air around the world. We're, 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 we're dealing with a crisis here, folks. It's a crisis made by human beings. Maybe they should take their own advice before jetting off across the world on those private jets, emitting all that carbon. This would be a government, a world government, where you don't get to vote on anybody. This is everybody's worst nightmare. From the White House in the office of the President of the United States, we present an address by Dwight D. Eisenhower. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. We must also be alert to the equal and opposite danger that public policy could itself become the captive of a scientific, technological elite. And we'll be faced with equally consequential decisions in the 21st century. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement. There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that, mark my words, before your tenure is over. Can brain scans be used to determine whether a person is inclined toward criminality or violent behavior? You will rule on that. If you have enough data on a person, especially biometric data, and if you have enough computing power you can understand that person better than the person understand himself or herself. And then you can control this person, manipulate them, and make decisions for them. Can you imagine that in 10 years when we are sitting here, we have an implant in our uh, brains, and um, I can immediately feel, because you all will have implants. People will literally be part of a network all the bodies, all the brains would be connected together to a network and you won't be able to survive if you're disconnected from the net. With AI taking over many of the unskilled and possibly some of the skilled activities, then there will be people for whom there is, seems to be society it won't have much use for these people. We need to accept that there will be some pain in the process. I think we're going to have to think about a recalibration of a whole range of human rights that are playing out online. Individual carbon footprint tracker. Many of these things will be built directly into our, our, our bodies. That's a hostile corporate takeover of your body and a digital surveillance censorship dictatorship. President Eisenhower tried to warn us about this years ago. The hostile takeover of, of a, a scientific, scientific technological elite. They provide much more powerful intelligence for decision-making. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement? You will rule on that. The next phase is the surveillance going under our skin. Now that we've cracked the code of life, it will not take much longer before we can start to play God. The new powers that we are gaining now, especially the powers of biotechnology and artificial intelligence, are really going to transform us into gods. It's a total, complete AI takeover of every facet of human life, like Harari and others have been saying. 
given all the technological developments, it might be feasible, even easy, to support people, uh, even if they don't work, to give them a universal basic income, to give them enough food, enough medicine, and so forth. The big question is meaning. What will they do all day? And one of the answers is that they will just play computer games all day, uh, virtual reality games. They will spend more and more time playing virtual reality games that will give them uh, much more excitement and emotional engagement than anything in the real world outside. But what I see is a huge disruption. That is, before we get to the world that Yuval envisaged in his description of the future, there's going to be a complete destabilization of the human condition and of human societies. This is not going to happen quietly. young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, half of this cabinet, are actually young noble leaders of the world. Right. So if we penetrate the cabinets, the change is not just happening. The change can be shaped by us. We have to prepare for a more angry world. How to prepare to take the necessary action to create a fairer world. I see the need for a great reset. So people assume we are just going back to the good old world which we had and everything will be normal again. This is, uh, let's say, fiction. It will not happen. Pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack.